the best arena deal in the history of the state of Arizona. Those are just some words that were shared by Tempe's own Mayor Corey Woods in the Tempe City Council meeting last night as the Tempe City Council put up to a vote the Tempe Entertainment District. We're going to talk about that what was seen and heard at the City Council meeting on today's episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. Just me today, but this you are listening to the Locked On Coyotes podcast. I want to thank everyone for making this show your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. And of course, for those local listeners, we are available on the KPNX 12 News app. we got a great show for you guys today. The Tempe City Council had a meeting last night, a special meeting on their second and final hearing of the Tempe Entertainment District. Lots to happen in the night. Let's go ahead and get get, get, get the, uh, you know, all everything out of the way. I mean, because it's no surprise that, you know, everything had happened now. The Tempe City Council has voted unanimously in favor of the project, which clears the final hurdle for that public referendum we mentioned a couple weeks ago. That's going to be for that May 2023 election. But the City Council has essentially said, yes, we like this. And at seven to nothing. Let's take a look at two. I mean, let's 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 really look back, right? The Tempe City Council has kind of come a long way. And just in general, we've come a long way at this project from when we first started hearing about it. The Coyotes submitted this project in August of last year, August of 2021. And they were the only team that submitted the only group that submitted the city of Tempe's request for proposal. It went through months long of discussion and uh or and just kind of, and everything like that. In about January of just this year, I took a look at you know a report that uh you know that Craig Morgan put out saying that hey, you know this arena deal might not get passed as of right now it is standing you know we have the there's about uh out of the you know the in favor and not in favor it was i believe it was like what two in favor two not in favor and like you know a few undecided votes that makes a difference right there right in the the city council went from kind of, you know, on the fence here, you know, trying to decide what they really wanted out of this and trying to decide if this was the right thing for the the city of Tempe, for the city of Tempe and its residents. And now months later, it passes the RFP. I, that, when it gets the RFP, it was at a uh, five to two vote. So kind of like, uh, which was, you know, just enough to get it passed and to approve and accept the RFP to cons- to enter negotiations. That was in June. Now we're in November, where it passed seven to zero. Only one of the one of the opposings opposing city council members is no longer sitting on the city council. She went up for election for the. Uh, um, for the corporation commission earlier this year, but the another opposition vote was still sitting on the city council, and she even said, "Back in June, I was skeptical, and I voted no. Now, I believe I, I believe in the Tempe voters to make the right decision, and I'm going to fully support this project." That's how long we've come. In just a matter of months, and I think that's an awesome thing to see that these <laughs> that we're getting this close 
Another another hurdle has been cleared for the Arizona Coyotes for this project, the Tempe Entertainment District, because it's going to be a lot more than just hockey, right? It's going to, you know, there's going to be that, well, there's still going to be that, com- that the community I said on too, but it's not just Coyotes hockey, but everything else, the youth programs, j- public skate, you name it, it's going to have it. And have a theater. It's gonna have shops. It's gonna have hotels. It's gonna be a massive project. Two point one billion dollars. That's a lot of money. It's 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 absolutely amazing to see how far we've come. And it was a great meeting too. Overall, the meeting lasted about uh, four ish hours, close to that, three and a half, four hours. Uh, And it was long. Uh, Lots of public speakers. uh, Lots of support. There's lots of you know, a lot of things to get to. Uh, you know, we, we there were some pretty big names there. Obviously, you know, Coyote, former Coyotes captain Shane Doan was in attendance. Alex Morello had a couple comments he had you know, to put out. Coyotes owner Alex Morello. Not to mention you, you, uh, Commissioner Gary Bettman, Coyotes President Javier Gutierrez, lots of lots of Coyotes fans. You know, other major key players within the city of Tempe, within the Coyotes organization, all voicing their support for this project. And it was awesome to see. And we're going to talk about some of the things that we're seeing and heard. And I'm kind of, kind of, you know, give my thoughts on some of those. We're going to get to, we're, we're going to continue to get those here on the Locked On Coyotes podcast. I do want to let everyone know, though, that today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline is number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball, soccer to esports, and of course, hockey, we've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those as well on BetOnline as well. We're always, they are always the fastest and easiest way. To get your betting fixed, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. I once again want to thank everyone for making this show your first listen every day. We really appreciate all your support of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Let's go ahead and uh, move on, though, um, as we get to you know some of the some of the clips of seen and heard of what we heard at this Tempe City Council meeting. I want to get to, first of all, of course, Commissioner Gary Bettman, because he was in attendance. That's all, you know, serious. The NHL is trying to support this project and make sure hockey works here in Arizona. I'm going to go ahead and let Gary talk first, and then we're going to go from there, and I'm going to go ahead and maybe break things down, break, thing, break down some of my thoughts about, you know, what he said. For our game to be developed at all the levels, particularly to young people, instilling the values of our game, which is leadership, teamwork, physical fitness, hard work, and and we think that's all important. Uh, and as I said, it will shine a light on Tempe. We will bring league events here, whether it's an all-star game or a draft. That is our commitment to you if this project goes forward. Uh, we believe this is a win-win. It has our complete support and we respectfully urge you to support it. We're fully supportive of the process that's been engaged with, and hopefully tonight will be one step closer to taking us to the public referendum, where hopefully the community will have its opportunity to speak. Thank you, and it's great to be here. Thank you, Now, that was just a portion of what Gary Bettman said, but, you know, there's a lot of things that you could take out of just that clip alone. Uh, no, Gary is talking about, the growth of hockey, not just the Coyotes themselves, but at all levels. Like I mentioned, they're working to try to build that community rink. There's the youth program. Earlier, too, we heard from a a uh, player on the Arizona Kachinas program, which is that girls' hockey association. You know, she got a chance to speak, too, and, you know, pretty much said, hey, you know, hockey works here in Arizona. Every, I think that's the theme that we heard. Right, Commissioner Gary Bettman said, "Hey, you know what? If this thing gets approved, too, we will commit to league events here, a draft, an all-star game, and not one thing that wasn't said in that clip alone, but was mentioned, but that Gary Bettman did say during his comments 
was reaffirming that commitment that the Coyotes will be signing a 30-year non-relocation deal if this thing finally gets approved. Which, of course, the city approved it. Now it's up to the Tempe voters. We've got a few months, well, a few more months until, you know, that happens. But that's the, you know, that's where we're at. The Arizona Coyotes are that close to, to being in the Valley, cementing themselves in the Valley long term. 30-year non-relocation deal is absolutely amazing to hear something like that. And it's, you know, to see the support from the commissioner, um, the support from the league, because, you know, uh, Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly was also in attendance. Uh, if you notice that he was kind of just like right behind Gary um, sitting down there. But it was, you know, good to see that. And, you know, he's talking about, you know, the fact that those events can shine a light on Tempe, you know, right there off the Tempe town. Like, those are things that are going to be seen nationally, you know, on ESPN and on TNT, you know, the games that show, uh, you know, NHL hockey. And it's good. Hey, it's going to be there. It's going to show Tempe. It's not really, you know, that's where the focus is. Don't worry about Phoenix. Don't worry about Glendale. Don't worry about Scottsdale. Focus on Tempe, but of course, you know, as we mentioned, the you know the idea, the theme that these guys, ha- these a lot of these speakers have been trying to go with, is that hockey belongs here. And one of the people that spoke to that is uh, Co- former Coyotes captain Shane Doan. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share what he said at the city council meeting as well. I believe hockey works here. I believe enough that I put my whole career based on that. I bet my career on that, and I still do. But it needs to have a home in the field that we're talking about now in order to make the playing field equal and safe. We just heard Mr. Armstrong talk about how important it is to Tampa Bay to have their organize, to have the success that they had through the organization with the building. We need that here. It's something that if we do it right, we will be a, a staple franchise that will be somebody that everyone else kind of looks to as an example. I've been here long enough to see when the Tempe was filled, when, the, when they filled the Tempe Town Lake. I was here, I was driving down the 202 when the Sun Devils beat Nebraska 17 nothing and, and won, the, won the, went to the Rose Bowl, unfortunately didn't win it, but we went there and it was an unbelievable experience for the city of Tempe and the way that it brought Tempe together. I've watched what Tempe's done with the Tempe Town Lake. It's, it's been talked about how it's only the second most visited uh, landmark in the whole state. The foresight that has been shown is incredible. I think that if we continue to do that and have the opportunity to do that with putting an explanation mark kind of at the end of Tempe Town Lake and saying, hey, this is, this is a district that everybody wants to go to. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's, that's a great thing to hear from... Uh, from Shane Doan as he spoke at the Tempe City Council meeting. And, you know, first and foremost, the hockey belongs here. Uh, the, the Coyotes just need a home to make sure that it stays that way and that it becomes a true reality to see the support. And what better place to have it than literally right, you know, right by Tempe Town Lake. And I think that's what the focus is, you know, you know kind of that some of that focus is, right? Because the, you know, as he mentioned, Tempe Town Lake is Arizona, the state of Arizona's second most visited landmark next to the Grand Canyon. That kind of gives you a freaking awesome idea of, you know, the kind of tourism that's being brought already to the area. And Shane Doan said it pretty good himself. Let's put an exclamation point. Right there at the end of Tempe Town Lake with, with this entertainment district. Make it a reality and voice your support for it. Um, that was a really good thing to hear. Um, a lot of great other public speakers out there. One of the things I do want to say, because now that we're on the Shane Doan, there was a Coyotes fan who kind of uh, was the last public speaker of the night. Um, was just talking, you know, was talking about a lot of different things. Towards the end of his comments, he turns over to Shane Doan. He's like, look, you know, take a look at this guy. There was some words in between. Like, I don't have the exact quote on me um, up until this important. He's like, he's like, that dude's a god. 
And I'm, I kind of laughed at that. I was like, dude, same. Um, but you know, the, to see that support. And of course there was some opposition. We heard from the airport who, um, continued to, to oppose it, um, and talk about stuff like that. But, um, and then, you know, several other vocal oppositions who, Who's a lot of main concerns were probably addressed. Um, I don't know how much um, they listened. You know, we didn't speak to them um, afterwards or anything. But the uh, you you would think that based off what was said at the meeting, that it was addressed. That there was like, okay, we have these problems addressed because look, we got a privately financed arena, privately financed district. That's going to bring in a lot of money, and that's not going to have any any pro like issues towards uh, any liability to Tempe City ta taxpayers, unless you're on the district itself, unless you're living there, unless you're staying at one of the hotels, unless you're buying something from the shops, from the restaurants, from the arena, from whatever. Like, it, then you're not paying for it. So. That's you know one of the biggest things that I think had to be discussed, but of course, once again, the Tempe City Council voted at seven zero in favor of it. We talked to um, the uh, the members of the media, uh, talked to uh, Javier Gutierrez after the meeting uh, to kind of get his ideas, and I'm going to show ahead and sh share a clip from that as uh, at, to to close off the uh, seen and heard section of this show. So I'll go ahead and hear from Javier. I think it starts with with gratitude tonight, right? Thanking the city council, thanking the city staff for all their incredible hard work, and it starts tomorrow, right? Where there is a formal process that we now have to begin in terms of signaturing, signature gathering, uh, commencing the referendum. But more importantly, it's about being able to touch every person in this city, in this community that is our community, and starting with that by letting them know it is our community and to let them know just how incredible this project is. We've said from day one, this is a transformative project. It is an opportunity to turn a landfill into a landmark. It is an iconic uh, project that we are very excited to come bring to the reality. And it's an incredible deal. You heard directly from all those council members. This is a privately financed deal. Everything you see on those great visuals we will be paying for it. Now there is remediation and infrastructure that our land and our real estate will be the sole collateral for and that will be the repayment sources on And so that's why we feel incredibly confident that the, the residents of Tempe, the voters of Tempe, will absolutely see this as the benefit that we know it is for this community. Anybody else? Am I jumping in? So that, you know, those were some of the, just some of the comments that we heard from Javier Gutierrez. And, uh, you know, again, he kind of reiterated what I just said earlier, you know, that this is a privately financed and, you know, the, the only people who are really paying for it are the people that are going to be on there. Um, and, you know, that's going to be the repayment for the bonds for the public infrastructure part, you know, to, to remediate the land, to remove the trash, to shore up the levee, to move, to move the power and sewage lines that run underneath everything like that and you know it, it we, we just feel so relieved to see that the that they moved past this and they're getting ready for the public referendum and you know they got to get ready for that now um that's going to be may 16 2023 so you know if, if you live in the city of tempe put a uh, put that on your calendar if uh you don't live in the city of tempe you can also put that on your calendar because you know what it also still makes a difference, right? You know, you can still pay attention and follow that kind of election live, see what happens. Um, and, you know, there is still a lot of concern. Uh, I'm going to get to, you know, some of my final thoughts, get to all of that in a moment. I do do. I do want to thank everyone, though, for making Locked On Coyotes your first listen every day. Uh, for your second listen, be sure to check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter most, the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes. With local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today is available on this app on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. 
But I want to go ahead and now go ahead and uh, kind of gear things back to me because there still is concerns, right? Um, you know, one of the things that – well, one of the concerns, I guess, is – um, that I was trying to say before um, before that is, look at this. It's it's up to the Tempe City voters, Maricopa County, and this, the, the 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 Valley. You know, has you know millions of people here in in the Valley, um, and a lot of people. You know, you would you would think, hey, you know, we should get more more people to have a say, but it's up to the Tempe City voters. The and and Tempe is much smaller, right? The city of Tempe population is much much lower. Um, it is just in the you know pretty low thousands. Um, if I can get the information there, it is a population of just under two hundred thousand people, which is still a lot. But um, but remember this: there is you got to consider how many people registered the vote. Let's say less than half of that. Um, how many people are actually going to vote? The this this referendum can literally just be you know a solid thirty forty thousand people voting on it, if that, right? Um, you know, I think there is hope that more people vote on it that they ha that they get the full engagement of how many people you know, of it, especially since uh, we're talking about the magnitude of this project. We're talking about how big of a project this is for the city of Tempe, for Maricopa County, for the Valley, you know, to see exactly how, you know, you know, what kind of impact it's going to make. And then the Coyotes are going to do what they can to, you know, make this, you know, make sure that the voters are reassured that this is the right deal for them. You know, a lot of people are hearing, you know, like I mentioned earlier, aspects that might be you know, publicly financed. They're worried about the um, property tax abatements. They're working with they're, because, like, hey, you know, like, why are you giving tax handouts when things are getting more expensive here in um, to live here? Um, and the, you know, the fact of the matter is, and it's something that uh, Mayor Coy Wood said, it's like, and a bunch of other people had said, let's take a look at it this way. Every other arena and sports venue in the Valley has property tax abatements, and every other one has it in perpetuity. It's pretty much, you know, it's like, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's lifetime, you know, which is absolutely insane when you compare it to what the coyotes are offering up here and it's like, hey, we're only asking for 30 years for the arena, for the practice facility, and for the theater. Everything else is only going to be on eight year. And after that, after those eight years on everything else, tax revenue comes in and money comes to the city of Tempe. Those are some things that, you know, need to be addressed. And I think the coyotes and everyone involved need to make sure that misinformation doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Because now that's what you got to do. They got they're going to be obviously first collecting signatures. They need at least two thousand signatures, which I believe should be really really easy to do. But they should they need to collect two thousand signatures to be able to. Uh, officially get it on that May 2023 ballot for that referendum. That shouldn't be too hard. Like I said, that shouldn't be too hard. Heck, you could probably um, have, you know, be at Mullet Arena at a game and get 2,000 in, in maybe a night if there's, if all, if at least 2,000 Tempe residents are there. If not, then hey, make it two games. Three games, whatever it is, that shouldn't be two thousand signatures. Is not hard if you are a major sports franchise trying to build a major project. Once again, a two point one billion dollar project just off the Salt River. So we'll see where things go from there. But once again, at a after a seven zero unanimous vote. I think it's absolutely amazing how far we've come uh, to get to this point. 
And now, once again, yeah, it is up to the voters for that final say. It's going to be months and months of, you know, a lot of election stuff and a lot of things to get to that point. But it seems that they're moving in the right direction. The Coyotes are moving. They are getting that real close step to cementing their legacy, cementing they, their stay in the Valley in a place that I believe that hockey belongs as well. You know, I've mentioned you know multiple times before I play hockey here in the Valley, and it's awesome to see um, the growth of here. Our time, we have the Grow the Game series for a reason. So on that note, though, I'm going to go ahead and close things off. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review, like, comment, and subscribe if you have yet to already. We are available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube. Um, don't forget to uh, check us out also on the uh, KPNX12 News app, like I mentioned, because we are also found on on there. Don't forget to interact with us, though, on social media. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash locked on coyotes, on Instagram at locked on coyotes. And on Twitter at LO underscore Coyotes. And I'm personally at Robin underscore Leonio. That's R-O-B-Y-N underscore L-E-A-N-O. You can interact with us. Ask a question you might have via mention, via DM. My DMs are open uh, to you know ask any question you might have about the arena deal, about the AOS and the Coyotes. I want to hear anything you guys got. And I can interact right back. Or even make me make, make make some comments on a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast, and we're going to keep talking about this. We are going to keep talking about the arena and the project. We're going to keep talking about you know where things are. We're going to keep you guys updated as best we can. We're going to have guests. We're going to ho- hope to get some some major guests down the road to continue to grow the game series with the focus on the arena and as well as other grow the game aspects right here in the state of Arizona. But once again, that's going to be it for today's episode of the Locked on Coyotes podcast. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.